So everybody is going to just look up here for a second, then I'll release you for about two minutes to work. So you need to draw a right triangle. Remember the right triangle to be over on this side, okay? So if you remember the way you draw a right triangle, you normally you, not the way that I just did right there. You normally want to kind of draw a straight line here, okay? And then take a dot on the end, put the comp, uh, protractor rather, line it up, the dot's there, and then we're going to go up to 90. And then you'll draw your straight 90. Then you'll pick a point over here, and this could obviously go up as high as we want. I'll pick that point right there. And I said I want a 40, 50, 90 triangle. We are all going to make this angle down here, I don't know, the 40 degree. This is your 40 degree angle. So don't write yet because I don't, some of y'all need help on protracting. You put the dot right there on the dot. You adjust this so that the line on your protractor matches that line. And then you start counting up from 0, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And then you put that and this and line it up. And uh, you might run into the same problem that I did, and that is you ran out of space. So you want to calculate what you wanted to do. And we'll label it. We'll say 40 degrees, 90 degrees, 50 degrees. Um, Depending on how well you measured your 90 and your 40 will depend on whether or not this is a 50 or a 51, 52, or a 49 or 48. But that's okay. I want you to definitely make this sucker 40. And then I want you to measure in centimeters this side, this side, and that side. Let's call uh, this A, B, and C. I want you to measure those in centimeters. I'm gonna, uh, you've got the protractor there that has a little run. I'm also going to see if we have some other rulers in case it takes a little bit longer than that. But everybody does it, preferably I want some people making really large triangles, large 40, 50 feet triangles. Some people make kind of smaller ones. Some people kind of make it ones that are just right, okay? Goldilocks got to do one, all right? So some really large, some really small. So everybody's gonna have a different size of triangle, but they're all gonna be 40, oh, proportional. Look at me, I'm using today's vocabulary word. Yes, all right? Uh, Mr. Greensword and I are going to be walking around uh, for help with protractors. Also, handing out rulers. Who has rulers from here, Dave? I've got, I've got, a, I've got a handful in my room. I'll get those just so we can. Sometimes the lines are longer than the protractor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like if your angle is half, like using one millimeter, your measurement and the, the hypotenuse is going to be half by at least uh, two, uh, one and a half centimeters. Based on how big is the triangle. Those of you that have it, I'll put one per table. Uh, if you have like a longer triangle with a longer side, then I want you to measure that in uh, centimeters, remember. All three sides measured in centimeters.
don't, I want you to extend that line all the way up to this vertical guy. <coughs> Make sure you're measuring those in centimeters. Uh, if you get that, go ahead and use the calculator to verify that the Pythagorean is true for your right triangle, or at least kind of <coughs> Um, also, so uh, we're going to call this side over here little A, uh, this leg over here little B, this hypotenuse over here little C, and then we're going to label the angles, this 40 degree angle I'm going to label capital A because it is across from the little A. This 50 degree angle up here I'm going to label uppercase B because <coughs> it's across from little B. And then the right angle, I'm going to label it as uppercase C because it is across from the little C. <coughs> All right, good centimeters. So I've got the capital letters A, B, and C. Are we recording? Okay, good. Capital A, capital B, capital C. We're talking about the angles. Little A, little B, little C are talking about the sides. All right. It looks like everybody's about there. All right. Now, this is the honors class, and so being honors, uh, I know a lot of y'all have been exposed to trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent, at least in some form. Okay. I'm going to assume that you have not, and that's why we're kind of doing this activity here. Okay. Um, so, for those of you that are aware of sines, cosines, and tangents, um, you know that it's all about the angles. Okay? In particular, I'm always going to focus in on one angle and then do stuff with that angle. Okay? The reason why I wanted all of us to have our picture in the same orientation is so that now what I can do is I can say circle angle A and everyone there is going to circle the angle which happens to be in the lower left corner. And it's the acute angle and it's 40 degrees and we're all on the <coughs> So I'm going to say now everyone circle angle A. Put a circle there. We're going to talk about some vocabulary and some relative terminology. Now, uh, with right triangles, Travis, you know that there's two legs and hypotenuse. Am I right? Which side is the hypotenuse? C. C, you are correct. It's the long one. 
And then these two, which are touching the, uh, the right angle, or your, these are the legs, A and B are the legs. I think we're all pretty comfortable with that. Now, the, what I'm gonna show you is that um, the leg that is across from or opposite from, opposite to angle A, this is called the opposite. That's the origin of the vocabulary. Because it's opposite. What is it, op what is it opposite to? The angle that I have circled. <laughs> okay? So I'm writing opposite right there. Um, I should have written it down when Travis told me, but I'm gonna write it down now. Little c, this uh, uh, side over here, is the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna write hypotenuse over there. That only gives us one leg left, and those of you who know the terminology, it's a weird word, it's the word adjacent. So we would say that this leg is adjacent. Now adjacent just means touching, or neighbors, or next to. That's what adjacent means, okay? So I'll write next to these. So prey is adjacent to dolphin. Your neighbors, you're next to each other. Okay? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right? Now, I, I say all of this because we circled angle A, okay? What if we had circled angle B? Would this still be the opposite no. to angle B? No. <coughs> this side over here would be the adjacent side to angle B, and that down here would be the opposite. I say all that to tell you this, that which side is the opposite and which side is the adjacent is relative to which of those two acute angles that you have chosen, okay? Let me say that again. The location of the opposite depends on which angle you're talking about. If I'm talking about angle A, then the opposite is over here. If I was talking about angle B, then its opposite would be down here. So just thinking ahead, if in the future I draw some triangle like this and I say this is X and this is Y and this is Z, and I say, um, Preston, which one's the adjacent? Do you have a solid answer for me? Um, okay, give me an answer. I would say that. Wrong. Wrong. No, Jake, you can't tell me. Which one is the adjacent? To which angle? So you have to you have to ask me a question. You have to say which angle. You say X. I was like, oh nope, this is the adjacent because I was talking about this angle. And if you were to say, okay, that's the adjacent, I say, nope, this is the adjacent because I was talking about this angle. You see what I mean? Where the adjacent is, and me interrupt you. Okay. So, um, which one is the adjacent? Which one is the opposite? Depends on which angle I'm talking about. And that's why I'm going to always recommend that you circle the angle that you're talking about, and then you draw an arrow right across from it and say, this is the opposite. And then you also know where the hypotenuse is because it's always the longest side and it's always across from the 90 degree angle. And then um, the other side over here would be the adjacent. So if I was talking about this uh, angle right up here, then you don't need to draw this on your triangle. But then up here, I would say, that's the opposite. This is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse never changes. The hypotenuse is locked in. It's always across from the 90 degree. And this over here is the adjacent. Tell me, does that make sense? Okay, now this is a question um, that Dominic might ask me. He might say, Mr. Goddard, what if you circle this angle, right? Because then, right, this over here is not only the hypotenuse, but it's also the opposite. And then which is the adjacent? Is it this? I have no idea. And the answer is, that's a bad question. We're not going to circle the 90 degree <coughs> angle to be figuring out in information about that, okay? We're always gonna be asking questions about those two acute angles, those other ones that are smaller and on the side, okay? Maybe at some point next month, we will talk about at the, no, we never, when I'm talking about this, this is what I'm, 
this is the situation. Um, those of you that did do a little bit of trig last year, was anybody ever kind of like confused by which one was opposite and which one was adjacent? It's okay to raise your hand, okay? Because I don't even know if I was a student if, if I had this locked in. But does it make sense now? Pick the angle, then you can say this is the opposite and this is adjacent. Are we good on that? I think that's speaking that word for that one good now. Okay. Um, one of the really neat things about trigonometry and, and um, is something that we're going to find that all of you have different size triangles, but there's something that all of your triangles have in common. Okay? And we're going to do that right now. On your paper and with your calculator, I want all of you to calculate, or each one of you, calculate uh, the ratio. <coughs> calculate the ratio of the opposite divided by your hypotenuse, and go ahead and carry it out to maybe three digits after the decimal. Uh, yes, going off of A. We'll do, do a lot of these later. So, Dalton, just give me, what was your opposite uh, number? So, in his case, it was 2.7 centimeters. And what was your hypotenuse? Four. So, for Dalton, he's going to do 2.7 divided by four equals 0. 0.675. Uh, no, it, that's, they, that's not that's not centimeters. It's centimeters divided by centimeters. That's the ratio. Oh, <laughs> okay. <coughs> Did you do infinite on both? I did infinite on all of them. Okay. Well, so we should end up with some more answers. Did anybody else get something around 0.6? He got around 0.67, okay? Anybody get around 0.67? Anybody get around like 0.64, 0 0.65? All right, raise your hand if you got 0.6 anything. Raise it, look around. That's interesting, wait a second. A lot of people have 0.6, but wait, does your, is your triangle exactly that same size? That actually is kind of about the same size. Who else got a 0.6? Yours is smaller. Yours is smaller. Yours is smaller. You're on a point six, right? Yeah, you got to go by the cushion. It's millimeters. All right, Robert, you too. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, I want another ratio. I want all of you to calculate the guy adjacent over the hypotenuse. Trey, what was your adjacent length? What was your hypotenuse? So you do 5.8 divided by 7.5 and put that. I want you to put label this. When I write on the board, by the way, you'll write on your on your paper because that's just part of the notes. So when you do that, what did you get? Uh, three digits. Did you say 0.733? <coughs> Seven seven three. Okay. Anybody else get around point seven? Everybody raise your hand if you have point seven something on your paper. Raise it high. Look around. Look around. Look around. I can see all. Whoa! Everyone got. Anybody get like around point seven seven? We got point seven eight. How about point seven six? Several of you point seven. Uh, okay. So that's interesting. Wait a second. Hold up your triangles so I can see. I'm see. You had a 0.78, right? That can, how does that compare? Larger or smaller to yours? This one's larger, uh, but Robert's is smaller than this. But y'all are getting the same ratio, okay? Now, we're, let's be honest here. We're not getting the exact same ratio, right? Why is that, do you think? Mm, maybe, they can't get exactly right 40 degrees, maybe some at 39.5, maybe some sort of measuring on this issue. Let's just be honest here. What if you were to find somebody who was like super precise and had really good like exact handwriting and knew how to use this tool and probably had maybe even a better tool as well as like some, had gone to like a 12 hour training on protractors and drawing triangles, stuff like that. And that's all they did for their job. Do you think they could get the same answer if they did it multiple times? 
Then the computer do it, but then you gotta ask to make sure the decision the computer's right. You know what I'm saying? And so it, it's helpful to know this. All right, the last ratio that I want you to do is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Taylor, what was your opposite number? 8.5. And your adjacent? 5.5. And when you do those, what do you get? 1.5. Something doesn't feel right about that. Anybody get a number less than one? Yeah. I think our 50 degree might be at the bottom. I don't know. We should all be getting a number smaller than one. But now, the, now let's check your measurements. I'm going to walk around, check your measurements. 50. Yeah, 50 is that Yeah, 50 or 40. Oh, hold on. I want 5.5 over here. I want the opposite. I, your opposite is going to be this side right here. Okay. <coughs> so it, in reality, yours was 5.5 divided by 6.6. 6. 6. Okay, so that's, yeah, so we just give me the wrong number there. All right, and, and what was that value? 6.83. Um, 0.83. Um, if y'all remember from triangles, the, the biggest angle is across from the, the biggest side, the smallest angle is across from the smallest side. So this one, this opposite, the side across from the 40, should be less than the side across from the 50. So we should have a smaller number divided by a larger number. So we should have something less than one here. So if you don't have a number less than one, check your numbers. It should be like 0.8 or 0.9, something like that. Raise your hand if you have like a 0.8 or a 0.9. Look around the room, look around the room. Wow. Who has the smallest triangle, they think? Robert, that's pretty small. Who has the <laughs> largest triangle? I think Grace did. Anybody have one bigger than that? Uh, yeah, you like maybe like small yours. Okay. What did you get, Robert, for your small triangle? For the, for this last ratio. Uh, point eight four six. And what did you get, Grace? The last for this last ratio. Okay, so you're both getting a point eight something. <clears throat> it's interesting that the largest triangle and the smallest triangle for both and all the rest of y'all that are in between still getting some similar answers here. Okay? Okay. That's some interesting stuff. Um, let's pause this over here. And I want us to think about something. We'll draw this and you can put this on your paper too. I want to think about uh, geometry and some triangles here. You may have had something like this before. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. In geometry, I don't know if uh, this has made a big deal to you, but I think it's definitely in junior high we did some stuff like this, where we said that this triangle is similar to this triangle, okay? Maybe you were told something like that, and you're told like this is, this side right here is two, and this side over here was like six, and this side over here was four, and you could do something to figure out this, right? Do y'all remember that? <coughs> if, if these two triangles were similar, if you had similar triangles. What would y'all do? How could you figure out what that question mark was? Okay, you can find that ratio, right? Normally you could say something like 2 over 4 equals 6 over x, or question mark, right? 6 over question mark. Now you can probably do this in your head. You can probably say that this is 2 to 4, that's a double relationship, so this is probably going to be 12. But if you wanted to, you could multiply them all out and just say like, uh, Question mark, yeah, we just say question mark is 12, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's double. <coughs> here, here it's double, here, here it's double, okay? Now, um, a, the question in geometry is 
how do you get similar triangles? Anybody know how do you get similar triangles? Similar angles. Uh, not just similar angles, but actually completely the same angles, congruent angles. If this angle right here, whatever measure it was, was the same angle as this. Furthermore, if this angle up here had to be the same as this, these are called angle marks, okay? And if this angle right here, I'll put three of them there, was the same thing as this angle here. If that was the case, if all three angles here were the same thing as those angles there, it's as if you just clicked on it and it, there's a little button over here, and you just and you dragged it and expanded it, you resized it proportionally both the x and the y direction, and then you get something that looks like this, okay? So three angles, if, the, if those angles are the same, and these angles are the same, then the ratio of this side to this side is the same as the ratio of this side to this side. Everybody good? So the note that I would say, similar triangles have um, three congruent, or I'll put, uh, I'll say three yeah, congruent angles, and that word that um, Dalton said earlier, they have proportional sides. Sound good? Now, let's go back to our example over here. All right, I'm content for everybody to walk like that. Does everyone in this class have a triangle that has a 40 degree, a 50 degree, and a 90 degree? Yes. So all of us have triangles that have congruent sides. So because they all have congruent sides, then all of our triangles are proportional. So I said, I, I would use the word similar when talking about the triangles. I would use the word proportional when talking about the ratio of the sides. Okay? But yeah, so that means that since we all have the same there, then for Dominic's opposite over hypotenuse, that ratio should equal Preston's opposite over hypotenuse. Would you all agree with that? assuming that both of them were able to measure this properly, okay? And Marari's adjacent over hypotenuse should match this over this, Travis's adjacent over hypotenuse. You should both get the same number when you do that division. Does that make sense? She's, uh, she's shaking her head no. What I would say is that, let's say, Marari, this was yours, and let's say this one over here was Travis's, he also had a 40 and he also had a 50. So we would say this one over this one. So in this case, that would be C over C for her. And this is X and this is Y would equal X over Y of his. Even though his triangle was smaller, if those angles were the same, we would say this side over this side equals his, this side over this side. Does that make a little more sense? Kind of drawing everything looks like this. Okay. So all of this stuff is super important. Um, the, the fact that our, our similar triangles based on those angles. Here's another thing. Um, mathematicians use these ratios so often that they have come up with nicknames for those ratios, okay? And here are those nicknames. In talking about um, a angle A, we would say, sine of angle A. Now it looks like sin, but you're not gonna sin in this class, okay? You're gonna say sine with a long I, all right? So you can write that on your paper as well. The sine of angle A is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And you can take that to the bank. If you want to uh, have a way of remembering it, look at the first letter, S, and then an O, and then an H, and we can write S, O, H, there is a nickname for the adjacent over the hypotenuse ratio. Cosine. That nickname is cosine. We abbreviate it COS, cos or cos. We don't say cos or cos, we say cosine every time we see that. Now I'm, I'm writing A here because it's not just cosine, it's cosine of that angle, okay? It's always related to one angle. So cosine of A is the 
be adjacent or refining. If you want a way of remembering that, I'll put capital letters here for the first of each. So C, A, and H. So C, A, H. Mm -hmm. And the third ratio that we use so often, you know, anytime you do something a whole lot of times, you give it a nickname, and mathematicians are the same way. So they gave a nickname for this, so they weren't always trying to say, can you do something about the uh, ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse or the opposite over adjacent it is the bank of these two triangles? They just be like, what's the tangent of 50? Or what's the tangent of 40? Or what's the sign? You see what I'm saying? Like, so as a way of making that, they say tan of angle A. So this is short for tangent. Some of y'all look like after summer vacation. I need, I need the conversation to stop, okay? Okay. Tangent. So we can uh, look at the capital first letter of each one of those. T O A. These are my jokes. So soak Sokatoa. That's the way you can remember that. S O H C A H T O A. All right, any questions? Um, all of this I have angle A. Is it possible for us to talk about uh, the sine of B? Yeah. Sure, the sine of B though, if I'm, if I'm looking at angle B, you could probably mark this up your paper a little crazy, but if I was talking about angle B, then I would circle angle B and I would draw the arrow over here, and this down here would be my opposite, and this over here would be my adjacent, the hypotenuse would still be adjacent. But, so those ratios, those numbers would be different if I had started the whole conversation about angle B, okay? All right, we're good so far? Got um, one more thing, and I'm going to erase all of this to talk about something interesting, okay? I guess I could tell you something before that. Um, uh, many years ago, hundreds of years ago, all right, uh, there were some math monks where all they did was sit around in a building and draw triangles. I know, pretty boring, huh? They would draw triangles and then they would measure the angles and they would measure the sides and then they would write them down in a book and then they would sell the book so that the rest of the mathematicians in the world could do some interesting stuff, okay? So you're like, what are you talking about? What would they do? Well, what they, would, what they did, you don't need to write this down, that there'd be some guy, he would, he would make a 40 degree, he would draw a triangle that had a 40 degree and 50 degree up here, and he would measure this, and he would measure this, and he would measure this, and then he would have a book, and he would say, uh, the sine of 40 is this number, the cosine of 40 is this number, and the tangent of 40 is this number. And you would get that by doing this divided by this, and then this divided by that, and then this divided by that. And then he would do, uh, create another triangle, and be super exact, because he had all the training, and do 40.1 degrees. And he would draw the triangle, and he would measure this, and he would measure this, and he measure this, and then he would write down the sine of 40.1 degrees is, and he would do this number divided by this number, and, and get some sort of value, then he would, calculate the cosine of 40.1 degrees, and he would take this number divided by this. You see where I'm going with this? And he would end up with a long list. It has this huge table, and th this guy would be part of the 40s, and then this, the guy in the, the room next to him would be doing the 50s, and, and then someone else would do the 60s, and you think I'm making this up, and I'm not making this up. They actually would do this, and then they would sell the book. All right? So that then other mathematicians could be able to do that. Now, eventually we got smart, and we got electronics, and someone said, hey, let's take all of that and put it onto a calculator. And that's what your calculator is able to do. You can figure out what the sine of 40 degrees is just by punching it in. But if you're not interested in it, it looks it up in a table that's already there. Would you like to see one of these books? Sure, I think you'd like to see a trick book. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Are we uh, up and running here? <coughs> sort of? I'm gonna... If you could type in your password there, that'd be helpful. So, what we're, what we're 
about to pull that up and before we leave, we'll show you that to you. There are two triangles, okay, um, that are really special, okay, that are that are there's more special than other ones. This, these are helpful, but we're going to talk about two triangles real special. Let me pull up though one of these trick tables here, or one of these trick uh, trick books. Uh, trick chart book, maybe? I don't know. There we go. Can y'all see that? That's not an issue of this, that's an issue of the screen. So I'll just go ahead and uh, turn off the lights real quick. Tell you. <laughs> Sine of 24.0, tangent of 24.0, oh, cocaine, yes, or cosine. Sine of 24.1, tangent 24.1, cotangent, cosine. We'll talk about cotangent a little bit later. Sine of 24, you see where, and then, and then there's 25 degrees. <laughs> How in the world did they get these? They went and they drew. They drew as specifically as they could that triangle, and they count and they they made they had that one angle of the twenty four, and then they measured the opposite. They measured the hypotenuse and they measured um, the adjacent, and then they did the division. And this is the number they got, and they rounded it to four because they didn't want to spend forever. Point four zero six seven. Point four zero eight three. Okay, and uh, so you know I'm not like making this up or making it sound kind of interesting or. I mean, we got. Who's the other one? This is another guy here. Okay, we've got zero. Yeah. Here's an actual. Anyway, that one is not really reading very well. There you go. Are you a believer? Uh, well, uh, in between the time of these uh, trig books and the time of the calculator, um, some, some clever people came up with a, a really neat thing called a slide rule, which is kind of like a ruler, but they kind of slide back and forth and it would tell you these things as you kind of, because there, there are relationships between these and there are <coughs> patterns, and eventually they found those patterns and I was able to save them a whole lot of time. But, um, but yeah, for, for a long time, if you want to know sine, cosine, tangent, there, there weren't calculators. Um, you either went and created the triangle yourself and measured them, or you looked it up in a book. Aren't you glad that you don't have to do that using a calculator? All right, you can get those lights back on for us. All right. Um, you might want to add, so that, that's kind of a fun project paper. You need to get one other sheet of paper out. Uh, maybe something that will go a little bit more permanently in your notes, this next piece of paper. So maybe something that's got holes in it. There are two special triangles that we use all the time. Okay? All the time. We use so often that they're called the special triangles. Okay? And the ratio between the sides of those triangles is very, very important, okay? So I'm gonna uh, show you those two triangles right here. So the first triangle is a 45-45-90 triangle. It's an isosceles triangle where you've got two angles that are the same. And you may remember that if you've got two angles that are the same, then what does that tell us about the sides? The, yeah, the sides are equal. So if I put an X right here on this leg, then what's the length down here of this leg over here? It's also X. But then what about question mark? What's that going to be? I don't know how to memorize. Close. Let's do Pythagorean on this x squared plus x squared equals question mark squared. So it's x squared plus x squared? 2x squared. 
question mark squared. How can I get rid of the square on the question mark? Square root. Square root. Um, for the whole thing. So question mark equals the square root of two times the square root of x squared. Hey, remember how we split up the radical like we did last week? All right. So uh, what's the square root of x squared? X, we should rearrange this. And square root of two is? Square root of two. So question mark is x root two. So no matter how big or how small your triangle is, if it's a right triangle and it has uh, 45 and 45, then it's going to follow this pattern based on the fact that we know similar triangles have proportional sides, okay? There's one more special triangle. Do we have enough time? Yeah. I'm gonna hold off on that other special triangle until tomorrow. It'll take about two minutes, but we have one minute and 20 seconds. So hold on to that, because we know we're gonna finish that, and then we're gonna do some problems based on that, okay? Class, today we talked about triangles. Talked about how all triangles have the same angles, they're, they are similar. Then that means the sides are proportional. We also talked about those different angles. If you pick an angle, then you've got uh, the opposite, the adjacent, the hypotenuse. And we talked about how mathematicians have special names for those, those ratios. Then some poor saps hundreds of years ago sat around and measured <laughs> those, yeah, to find out those ratios so we didn't have to. Make sure your calculator goes in the proper location.